Tensions are high on the island of Corsica as more French towns issue bans on the so-called Burkini. Muslims say they're being targeted. So is this about secularism or keeping fans safe? And what does it mean for Muslim communities across Europe? This is Inside Story. And welcome to the program. I'm Fully Batibo. A bikini or burkini? This is a debate that's going on across France at the moment. It began with the cancellation of a burkini event at a water theme park in Marseille. Then, just a few kilometers away from where the Nice attacks happened last month, the Riviera town of Cannes banned the full body swimsuit on its public beaches. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls has expressed his support, saying the swimsuit represents what he calls a provocation and an archaic vision. While only a small number of women have reportedly been fined $43 for breaking the new rule. Several other towns have followed suit. On Sunday, four people were injured in the town of Cisco in Corsica during a brawl between locals and a group of women dressed in burkinis. The incident led to a local rally where 500 people gathered in the island's capital, Bastia. Now, the French government has called companies who sell the burkini irresponsible. But what exactly is a burkini. Well, it looks very much like a swimsuit, a wetsuit, only it covers the head as well, leaving the face, hands and feet visible. It's usually worn by Muslim women out of modesty, but some non-Muslim wear it uh, to protect their skin from the sun. Those against the attire say it's a health hazard and not in line with French values. Anyone caught breaking this rule will be fined, asked to change or leave the beach. A court which upheld the ban in Cannes ruled that it's legal under France's current state of emergency. But anti-racism organizations and human rights groups have called the ban discriminatory and have vowed to go to the highest court to challenge the decision. France has also banned the full-face veil. The only other European country which has the same law is Belgium. So, what do people in France think? Here's what some of them had to say. I think the burkini isn't illegal. Everyone has the right to access the public beach. But at the same time, if we think about women's rights, the burkini is regressive, especially for French women who are quite free. It's a type of modesty to wear the burkini. It's our conviction. It's a way for us to enjoy ourselves, to go on holiday and to swim. And it's a pity to take this away. Time now to bring in our guests who are all joining us from Paris today. Jacques Millard is a French member of parliament and member of the opposition Republicans party. He will be speaking to us via Skype. And Judy Celli is a security analyst and founder of the security risk consultancy firm Terror Risk. And also joining us from Paris, Yasser Loati, a human rights and civil liberties activist and former head of international relations for the collective against Islamophobia in France. Thank you all. Welcome to Inside Story. Mr. Millard, if I may start with you, uh, you were the first to propose the ban on the full face veil in France. The burkini, some say, doesn't technically break French laws against religious wear because it leaves the face uncovered. So why is this ban against the burkini necessary? Well, first of all, we were very surprised that this kind of burkinis are spreading around in France because women are equal and we don't understand why should only women wear this burkini and not men. Because you said if it is to protect for sun, against the sun, this is a similar, uh, you know, protection for men, and they don't wear such uh, bikinis. So I think, in fact, it's a kind, in the spirit of the French, a kind of discrimination toward women. And you know that well, French women... It's a bit contradictory are, what you say, Mr. Mia. You say in the spirit of, of French values, if, if France is, as you say, the country of human rights, the country of liberté, égalité, fraternité, shouldn't everyone be able to, to wear whatever they want at the, at, the, at the beach? Well, I tell you one thing. If I go naked in the streets, I will, and I say this is my freedom, I will be sentenced by a tribunal. So in fact, you know, this kind of uh, uh, bath suit has been spreading through France and it was astonishing because for years and years, no uh, woman 
uh, having the muslin face has been uh, wearing this uh, kind of bossing suit. Mm. So I think it's... Why, why, why do you think it's happening be, now? You hold say on, please. One second, please. It has to be replaced in what happened in France in the last year where we had bomb attacks and, of course, uh, this kind of attacks has really shocked the French uh, entirely. And so today, when we see this kind of things, this kind of bossing suit claiming to be, I am a Muslim, and I claim to be, uh, to claim it and to, let's say, to impress, to implement it on the beaches, sometimes, of course, there are French who say this is not France okay. and we don't accept such a bossing suit. Okay. So it's not a question of individual freedom. It's a question of, let's say, global behavior. Okay. France is respecting Islam because Islam is part of the French religions and France has good relations with the many Arabic and, uh, and okay. Muslim states. Okay. And we want You've to made a lot of that. great points and I do want to pick up on each one of them uh, one by one. But let me just bring in Anne Giudicelli and pick up on one of the main arguments that's being made right now and, uh, and that Mr. Uh, Miard just made. And I know that France is, very, France is very much on edge right now after the Nice attacks and people who support this ban say that it's also a question of public order and a question of security. So my question is, how does this ban on the Burkini make France and French towns more safe and more secure? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, it's not uh, really a question of um, security. It's much more uh, how we, we manage to integrate, to, to let's say, put in one uh, France a uh, different culture because we are no more uh, unique. We are made of many kind of cultures and that's the, the that's the reason why now we are at, in a, at a point where uh, there is so many tensions regarding Islam mm -hmm. is is not I mean political parties and all the, the political class they are not helping the debate because it just make more tension the, 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 the issue has to be handled I mean with with peace and with Muslim communities none not the French the the political class opposed to Muslims in general. That has to be done uh, within a, a really frank dialogue with Muslim communities. And we have here in France many uh, Muslim people, uh, French Muslim people who are very, uh, I mean, keen at uh, discussing, uh, debating uh, this issue with mm -hmm. no tension. So that, that's the problem now. We, we are also in a in the political in the uh, election campaign sure. so there is uh, even more attention so about that politics are also at play here you think okay let me bring in Yasser Luati now Yasser uh, those who support this ban Yasser Luati say that you know the, the Burkini is a symbol of Islamic extremism so-called Islamic extremism and that it's basically clothing apartheid what do you respond uh, well, again, the ones speaking are the ones imposing their fantasies uh, upon others because, again, once more, nobody asked these women why they wear it. When the mayor of Cannes issued this decree, he did not initiate a mediation nor a public hearing. It was a unilateral decision. As for Mr. Miyar saying, for example, this is brand new, in 2014, for example, two years ago, a member of his own political party, Mrs. Nadine Morano, already spoke against the Burkini, and the Burkini has been in France for over a decade. As for equality uh, between men and women, it is quite surprising for men to legislate against women, use their bodies as battlefields for ideologies, and then decide on their behalf, exposing the argument that for somehow it is uh, about equality between men and women. As for wearing the burkini, well, there are non-Muslim women who wear it for various reasons. There are men who wear the swimsuit. Are we also going to ban the swimsuit on public beaches and this, and this is again quite a, a, a blatant sign of hypocrisy because a few a few days ago and if not a few weeks ago some Muslim women tried to privatize a private pool and the uh, and everybody disagreed including the right-wing political party and people from the government so these women can't swim in private pools they can't swim in public beaches they can't swim in public pools so are they human beings or not okay the other let's allow mr Mia to respond but you know uh, uh, excuse, just one point, just one point please because you know again we are using the terror attacks as an argument don't forget 
33 Muslims were massacred in Nice as well. So Muslims are also the victims of terrorism, including here in France. And we should also treat these Muslim women as fully fledged French citizens, not talk to them as if, as if they were some foreigners that need to abide to the laws of a foreign country. Okay, Mr. Miar, your response. I agree that the uh, Muslims have been the first victim of the terrorists. This is very true. There is no doubt about that. But you know, today we see that uh, part of Islam is going radicalized and is going on terrorism. And in fact, you see, first of all, women, French women, Muslim or not, have criticized this Burkini as something which is discriminating to women. This is not the men who are speaking, but women. Especially, we had the French female minister, Madame Rossignol, who said this is, was an archaism. Mm. So I think that you have to reckon with okay. that in the French society, since uh, you know centuries, like John of Arc, who has beaten the English out of France. <laughs> Mr. Mia, woman, can I just ask woman, you? Let me finish, please. Women are equal to men. How is it that only women are going to have such bathing suits? This shocks. This okay. shocks very deeply okay. the French culture and the French I, I, Mr. Miar, let me just ask you this, please. Please, just one question, Mr. Miar. You talked about terrorism and, and France being in a state of alert right now. How is this ban on the Burkini going to fix the problem of radicalization in France? Well, first of all, radicalism is step by step. Because, you know, I can show you a book of a Muslim whose name is Sufyan Zitouni who says very clearly that, in fact, this kind of veil, this kind of burkini is a tag for identities, community identity, which is not part of the French culture because we are all citizens. Citizens, whatever is your religion, whatever is your uh, color of skin, whatever is your gross or tall or small man. So, in fact, by tagging by marking this difference this is a very dangerous way in, in the way of politics i don't say this is of course an, a mean to ban let's say terrorism okay. but it is uh, a mean to say stop because you are entering in a kind of drift to to, to a kind of identity separated from the French Okay, let's hear community, from Anne Giudicelli. National Anne... community. That's why it is a dangerous game that those people, those Salafists, okay. are playing in France. Let me hear from Anne Giudicelli on this. Anne, you seem to disagree very strongly with what Mr. Miar has been saying. Well, let me just say something about this story that a woman agree with, uh, with that, uh, that problem. I mean, that uh, we have to ban uh, uh, Burkini and so on. Because just to rem remind, uh, that a few years ago, you know, it's not so, so far away, uh, the, it was very uh, difficult to show uh, the body for a woman, uh, I mean, in, in the, on, on the beach or anywhere, Indeed. and yeah. it's, a, it's a question of, let's say, period, okay? Mm -hmm. That's important to say. It is important, because in the 1950s, women, in places like America, women had to wear a certain length swim, swimsuit to be able to go on the beach. Yes, go on with your thought. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, uh, equality is a, in France between men and women is much more a social aspect than a religious aspect or cultural aspect. It's now it's becoming much, much more and more confessionalized. Uh, if you want, I mean, we just want to oppose Muslim communities, men and women included, which they argue that women are discriminated, and uh, the other French. Well, uh, now, uh, as I told you, we are we are in securism uh, system, so I mean, with Christian uh, roots. So let's just assume that we have those uh, uh, Christian uh, roots and we cannot uh, accept any other uh, roots. Uh, is it that the problem? P probably. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, on what you, you said about the danger, I mean, spreading and it's just the beginning of a, a big campaign, a Salafi campaign and so on, I, I, I really, really, uh, observe uh, since many years that more you put that tension on Muslim communities in Europe, more you, you give argues to the Salafi, not only the Salafis, but I mean the, the real extremists 
ranks within this um, uh, radical uh, trend uh, in, in the Muslim communities abroad uh, and so on. So, uh, I mean, more you put tension, more you will uh, create, uh, you will help the process of spreading. Right. It's what I really try to... Can, can I ask you something about that point specifically, many years now. and Judicelli, before I bring in uh, Yasser Luati once again, on that specific point that you've just made, you know, the only EU states that have banned full-face veils are France and Belgium, and some would say that the only EU states where there have been major attacks in the last year or two are France and Belgium. Do you see a connection between, between the two? Of course, we have a context, and uh, this context is, is, uh, has been instrumentalized by the, the political class and instead of trying to to put peace and open the dialogue uh, it's just used to make more tension because they have no solution they have no vision of the the evolution of uh, what is europe today so the the, the reaction is like uh, i mean just to trying to protect a very old model, a uh, European model, which is no more the, the reality in the street, if you want. Mm -hmm. So that's the, this difference is really obvious within the new generation, young generation, and the other traditional uh, uh, generation, and uh, that, has not, that is not helping the process of uh, uh, creating peace and, and dialogue okay. uh, that could open, uh, lead to a solution. Okay, yeah. let me bring in Yasser Luati once again. Yasser, just to be clear and that our audience knows this, not all Muslim women are in France are being targeted because, you know, when you read uh, some of the website, there, there, there seems to be a bit of an exaggeration. Not all Muslim women are being targeted with this ban, only uh, those who wear uh, the uh, burkini and cer only in certain towns in France. And I want to put to you one of the arguments that's being made to support this ban now, Yasser, and that is that those who support the burkini, those who want to see women uh, wear this burkini, uh, like a burqa, it is not a neutral attire, basically, and that it conveys a conception uh, of the woman as an object, basically, of lust, a subject. And that is perhaps why some feminists have not condemned this ban. What do you say to that? Uh, first of all, nobody said uh, we want to see women in burkinis. I say, and many people say, let's ask what those women really want before you know, issuing decrees against them. As for the targeting of Muslims in France, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you remember that there are several laws specifically targeting the visibility of Muslims, especially Muslim women. The ban in public schools, the ban against Vil nannies, the ban against Muslim, mother attend, Muslim mothers attending school field trips, the debate on, the, on allowing the headscarf in, in, in universities. We had a debate on this, uh, the size of skirts being worn by Muslim students. We had a debate on various issues specifically excluding Muslim from French society. Mm -hmm. But my question is this. Are we living in a democracy where the rule of law prevails or the rule of opinions prevails? As for the equality be between men and women, let's talk about the situation of women in our country, France. We have about 13,000 rapes going on every year in France. We haven't heard Mr. Millard speak up against them. We have domestic violence. One woman dies every three days under the, uh, the punches of her, of her uh, uh, husband or companion. Nobody speaks about that. 19, uh, the salary gap between men and women is about 19% in France. Uh. Women have spoken up against sexual harassment okay. in political parties, including the political party of Mr. Jacques Millard. Nobody spoke about it. Okay. And my last point is that if you want to link the Burkini to radicalization, Ahmed Koulibaly, one of the killers of January 2015, was posing with his girlfriend wearing a bikini in a beach. And that's the one of the person who took up arms against his fellow citizens. So we need to stop focusing on Muslims. And as my, uh, the, the person uh, who was speaking just before me, yes, we have a failed political system where people have no vision. Okay. The only thing they can bring about Let's is identity crisis. Let's allow Mr. Miyar to respond to all the points that you've uh, made. I think, first of all, I am not going to be insulted by someone who was saying that I'm not condemning rapes because we are condemning rapes and we have voted laws to help women victims of rapes. So please don't confuse things. We are talking about today a Salafist, you know, uh, community identity policy, which is 
that those women wants to okay, behave so and be Sarafism? recognized as what is Muslim Sarafism? radicals on the beaches. This is the main point. So don't okay, confuse what is things, please. And Muslim Hold radicals. on for one second, please. I'm going to finish. Secondly, you know, for years and years, Women, Muslim, Buddhists, or Catholics have been going to the beach, let's say, as everybody. And today, suddenly, we see this phenomenon coming up. Why? Because, in fact, it's a political demarche to assess we are Muslim, and we say it. Today, we have this kind of Buccaneers. Tomorrow, we will have few more claims. Mr. 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 Like are politics not also at play groups. here? I mean, election season is upon us in France. I mean, no, uh, no, no, it wiping has up to do. Uh, no, populist no, sentiment, chasing after those far-right no, votes. Isn't no, this what it's no, about also? No. Madam, please, it has nothing to do with election. This is a trend which is now yeah. in the French society for years. And this is something we have to resolve. I agree that everyone can, uh, you know, pray the God he wants. But there is something very clear, that we are citizens of this country. We are not Muslim citizens. We are not Catholic citizens. We are citizens. Okay. And this is why the laws, because I've heard that this is public opinion um, laws. No, it's the law of France. We have banned, if Cal this is true, the veil at school, because on the, on the question of equal sex, we have banned the entire hiding burqa because of dignity for women and the person. So please don't confuse things. I'm very surprised today that suddenly appears in France such phenomenon which has nothing with the French habits okay. and the French citizenship. Let's hear from Anne Giudicelli now. And Mr. Miar says politics have nothing to do with it, but you can't help but ask the question. You know, uh, the elections are just around the corner in France, and Marine Le Pen in the far right is doing quite well, uh, wiping up some of these populist sentiments. Do you think that is not also at play here? No, of course, it's a really a, a, a context that push uh, that leads to uh, uh, creating more, you know, buzz on this story and to see a burkini everywhere, like in Corsica. It was not a, a matter of uh, burkini, burkini on the beach, so it was much more, uh, let's say, a local uh, fight between uh, uh, people on the beach. Uh, so it's becoming a big. Uh, where is the burkini? Uh, you know, like uh, like uh, a subject of. Uh, well, political parties are trying to show that they are better, uh, they are stronger, mm -hmm. and they know how to fight against radicalism due to the, f the, 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 the context of the attacks in the last uh, November and in Nice uh, this year. So that's the problem. When Mr. Mayer said that uh, it suddenly we have seen Burkini, it's because, first of all, we see Burkini everywhere now. Secondly, which is wrong, uh, it's also, it, Yes, I do agree on the fact that s s since the last few uh, months, years, uh, we have been, um, I mean, we, we have seen those uh, radicalism, Salafi groups uh, sp spreading, uh, let's say, develop within the society. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when uh, you show that you, you, don't, you don't want Muslim, it's, it's, you know, it's understood by the Muslim, okay. the Salafi, uh, like uh, sh we show you that we are not part of your uh, uh, society because you, sh you show us every day that we are not part of your society. Okay. It's a kind of answer. It's a just it's a replying to that. Okay. Well, let's uh, give uh, Yasser Luati the last word because we're coming towards the end of the program. Yasser Luati, uh, where does this leave France's Muslim community and uh, perhaps Muslim communities across Europe because more countries now are talking about uh, also imposing this ban, more countries like Spain, for instance? Mark my word, madam, with these kind of decisions, you know, and the constant debates on the presence and visibility of French Muslims, France, unfortunately, has become the laboratory of Islamophobia. My deepest fear is that this will play into the hands of the terrorist groups who are constantly using this argument to keep hiring from within French youth, telling them, look out, they are mistreating you, mistreating your mothers and sisters and wives, etc. Come to us, you will fight for your dignity. And I am deeply... Uh, shocked that we don't have one single politician in France to be wise enough to guide us towards a common project instead of turning us against one another. 
We don't see any political project for France, nor a vision for the upcoming years. So right now, my word is towards the, the rest of my fellow citizens. Don't listen to politicians. Reach out to one another. And this, these challenges are our challenges. And the elites turning against, against, against one another will benefit from our division. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to leave it there. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for a very interesting discussion. Jacques Mia, Anjiri Chali, and Yasser Luati. Masalam. And thank you as well for watching. You can always watch this program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook fa page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter, of course. A handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fuli Batibo, and the whole team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.